Thank you, and thank you for having me here, Luca and Andy. My first time in Fayetteville. So this theorem for subharmonic functions, I have in mind, uh, ha it has been known since 1930s, but only in the plane, only in the dimension two. And in this talk, I will discuss this, uh, how to generalize this, this theorem in higher dimensions. And this is a joint work with uh, Marco Econen and Juha Kinunen from Helsinki and Carlos Bordone from Naples, Italy. So let me start from scratch. So like, as you all know, if omega is an open subset in Rn, uh, real valued function u is said to be subharmonic in omega if in addition to these two conditions here, we know that uh, for every ball well inside omega, u of x is controlled by this integral average over balls. And this last condition can be replaced with this <coughs> integral average over spheres or with the comparison principle with respect to harmonic functions. And Rado's theorem from 1933 says that a continuous function u is subharmonic in omega if and only if, oops, uh, if and only if uh, uh, this integral average over balls is controlled by the integral average of, of uh, over the sphere. And this is a n minus one dimensional Hausdorff measure, and it has to hold for all ball well inside omega. <coughs> and when n is one, uh, this here reduces to that one. This is just a counting measure and this characterizes convexity of the function. <coughs> so now this theorem of Peckinpah and Rado in the plane says that, uh, that uh, they studied luck, subharmonic functions. So a function uh, whose logarithm is subharmonic. So u is again, now d is a domain in, in, in R2 and it's u is continuous and log of u is subharmonic if and only if, if uh, this L2 integral average is controlled by this integral mean, in, uh, integral mean and this has to hold for all ball well inside omega. And, and uh, as, a, as a historical remark, uh, lux of harmonicity is related to surfaces of negative curvature. And uh, as an example, if f is analytic, then log mod f is subharmonic. So now one can ask, uh, do we have a similar characterization in higher dimensions? And there are two possibilities to, to, to characterize this theorem in higher dimensions. On one hand, I mean, you, you may study log subharmonic functions and try to find an integral mean inequality which, which characterizes them. On the other hand, <coughs> you may consider functions which satisfy a suitable integral mean inequality and ask what kind of subharmonicity properties uh, these functions have. <coughs> so, and this, this question actually do we have a similar characterization in Rn was asked by Peckinpah and Rado in their paper and in Rado, this, this question is also in Rado's book from 1930s. So what we have in Rn, uh, we have the following. So this, the first theorem is, is actually a question to this uh, answer to this question here. And it says that if we have a, n is bigger than three and u is a continuous function, then u to the power n minus two over two is subharmonic in omega if and only if this ln integral mean is controlled by, by that. And 
this has to hold for every pole again is very inside omega. <coughs> so now this subharmonicity of this function here is a geometric counterpart of log subharmonicity in higher dimensions. This, this, this is, uh, and this inequality here is equivalent to having s certain isoperimetric inequality for, for the scaled metric. So, and how to justify this, this theorem? Well, this is amazingly simple. I give a sketch of the proof. So first of all, assume that this guy here is subharmonic in omega. I'm gonna fix a ball inside omega and H is a, is a harmonic function which is continuous up to the boundary. And, and it's, yeah, it's harmonic and, and u to the power n minus two over two is its, its boundary values. So then since, since u, this here is subharmonic, uh, the comparison principle implies that uh, this guy is controlled by the harmonic function for every point, for each point in the ball. And <coughs> next, we, we, we need this certain sharp inequality for harmonic functions. And th this is uh, due to Hang, Wang, and Yang. And they, they studied this uh, uh, they tried to, they, they, in this two paper, they, they studied this question that they tried to find, uh, they tried to find a, sorry, I lost my thought here. Uh, well, anyway, so let me state what, what this inequality actually is. So n is bigger than three, or three and H is harmonic. So then we, they, they, from their results, we can deduce this inequality for harmonic functions. And this, this, this look like, looks like a mess here, but actually this is what, just what we needed here in the proof. So, and it, it's this becker pahan type integral mean inequality again. So we, we know that now, the first fact is that the this holds for every point, and then we have this inequality here. So now the proof is almost finished because we try to prove this integral mean inequality. So we first write this like that, so we can apply the previous uh, inequality. So we get this equality sign here, and then we apply the fact that the this is always less or equal to h of y. We get the first inequality. Then the third one, here we apply uh, this uh, inequality for harmonic functions due to Hang, Wang, and Yang. And finally, this is just the fact that h has boundary values, u of y to certain power. So this, this proves the fact that, that if, if, if u to the power n minus two over two is subharmonic, it satisfies this integral mean inequality. And the other part of the proof, uh, the claim is, is, is somewhat more technical and I, I skip it here. So what about if we study log subharmonicity functions and we try to find uh, integral mean inequality which, which characterizes them, is there such an integral mean inequality? This was our second uh, question. So now what we are able to say is the following. Uh, now, if for every ball well inside omega, we have this L n plus two over n mean, integral mean, it's controlled by this guy here, then log u is subharmonic. But uh, if log of u is subharmonic, then we, we have that the, this inequality, integral mean inequality here <coughs> for every ball. So now when n is two, when n equals two, when we are in the plane, 
this n plus 2 over n equals to n over n minus 1. But when n is bigger than 2, strictly bigger than 2, uh, this is strictly bigger, and bigger than this exponent here. And there are examples. Uh, there's a simple example showing that uh, this func uh, function is, logarithm of this function is subharmonic, but it fails to satisfy this inequality. So as a remark, this was like just theta. So they showed that uh, this, this condition one here, or this integral mean inequality is sufficient, but not necessary. So take this function here, this is just a fundamental solution. And if you lock this, this is known to be subharmonic in Rn minus origin. But there are points uh, such that the integral mean inequality fails. And then again, it can be proved that the condition one is the biggest condition that guarantees the sufficiency for, so, uh, yeah, for log subharmonicity. So to conclude, I can say that the, there is no characterization for log supremacy when n is at least three, which is kind of strange, strange thing. <coughs> so then we also studied more general integral inequalities. So now if we have a local integrable function in Rn, which is non-negative, uh, we say that this function satisfies the Beckenbach and type condition star. If there exists an exponent bigger than one and a constant A such that this guy here, LP, integral average over balls is controlled by this integral mean times the constant A for almost every X and almost every radii. So if, if, if integrable function satisfies this for some exponent b and a, then it, it has this condition star. And now when a is not one, subharmonicity is not relevant. Instead, we study reverse error inequalities and Mackenhout weights. <coughs> so a few examples. So it can be shown that uh, every non-negative subharmonic sub function satisfies this condition for every b strictly less than n over n minus one, and this is sharp here. Also, if u is continuous and it's, it's a one Mackenhout weight, then, then u satisfies this condition. And also the Jacobian determinant of a quasi conformal mapping satisfies this condition. So this is not totally empty class. Yes? Yeah, a one way this is, is such a functions, I mean, if you have a integral mean over balls, it's controlled by infimum of the function. Modulus some constant. So we have uh, this higher integrability property for functions which satisfy this condition star. Namely, uh, there exists a constant Q, which is strictly bigger than P, so that the ac actually this function U is, is integrable to this power Q. But what we lose here is that the ball on the right hand side is doubled. And, and this theorem is quite simple. It, it's, it follows directly when you apply the co-area formula, then you get this reverse Hölder inequality. So that on the right hand side, there's this doubled ball. And then you just apply a theorem of Zakinta and Modica to get this higher integrability result. But now since the ball on the right hand side is doubled, uh, this function is not a infinity weight. It doesn't belong to Mackenhaupt's class A infinity. So again, I, I ask a few questions. Is this condition star self-improving in the following sense? So does there exist Q and A prime such that the condition improves itself like that? 
and, and what would be the optimal bound for the exponent q. And a partial simple result is the following. If, if you satisfies in addition to conditions, uh, to this condition star, it satisfies this doubling condition, which is here. Uh, then this Peckepahan rada type condition star is self-improving self uh, in the sense I just said it. This is simple because now first we apply this higher integrability result to get this first inequality and then we just apply doubling and holder to get the second ine uh, inequality and then this condition star to get the integral over, over the sphere. So then this is just the, this, this just says that the condition star self improves. And Mackenhout weights and Jacobian of uh, quasi conformal mapping satisfy both these conditions. But in general, it's not known whether these conditions self improves or not. That's it. No, I don't know. I don't know. I have one other quick question. Yeah. Um, now we're talking about a function. A lot of times you want to let it go to minus infinity. I noticed for a lot of your later results, you're always assuming non-negativity. Mm -hmm. Did you assume non-positivity? Did you, did you use the bounded distribution? I mean, did you assume your function you were non-positive and so they could be minus infinity somewhere? Hmm. question uh, I have to think about that I, I, I yeah I don't know so yeah I have to think about that I'm not sure yeah B uh, yeah I mean It goes pretty much along the lines of the theorem of the proof of the, for theorem A. Uh, <coughs> yeah, actually it's amazing that uh, we were trying to prove these theorems and we, I mean, it's pretty simple and we had everything except for these inequalities. And then I, I, I just found these papers and they, they study completely different thing but they, they prove these inequalities from which you can deduce exactly those inequalities which we needed. So yeah, but the, the inequality in the proof of for here, it's, it's a little bit different, but, but it's similar, yeah. Okay. Hang, bang, and yang or something, yeah. Is the possibility explain why those things, why those theories are true? Like the, the ones we used in the end, is that? Oh. This one, yeah. yeah. I mean, the 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 paper, the, this this inequality is is in this paper, yeah, and it's quite involved. So, but they, yeah. I mean, it's. Uh, I don't know how to say in few words. So how, yeah, but 